Hey, hey, what's up? This is Neil, the art instructor. Top one of the top art instructors on Udemy with over I think ninety thousand students now, all happy students. Definitely take my Anatomy 2.0 course. That's what I'm correcting here. I'm helping a student here. This is what you can draw. I'm going to show you what he is drawing in a second. But this is something that we learned to draw in the course. You can check it out at masterpaintingnow.com. Link is in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. This is what you can turn your drawings into once you learn how to correct different mistakes that you might be making and learn how to draw. And so he's doing a very stylized character here. You can tell by how kind of like He's kind of going for like this manga look. I recommend to not do that, to just learn how to do proper, just human anatomy as to go through with the course, and then to start stylizing after you get the, the proper, you know, the regular human being down first, and then you can start stylizing, and get into different cartoons and stuff. But anyway, either way, um, just trying to do a cartoon doesn't change the fact you need to know anatomy. Right, you're just simplifying that. But if you if you don't have the anatomy down to begin with, then what you're simplifying is all wrong anyway. And so it's not going to look right. And there's certain things like certain rhythm lines, things like that you want to pay attention to. I want to go through some of those in this video first. So let's go through some of that. I'm going to use the color you can see here. I'm going to use an ink brush for now so you can really see the lines. So one you want to pay attention to is where this muscle starts here, the sartorius muscle. And it has this kind of S rhythm, right? So it kind of comes like across the thigh like this, and it goes behind. You have a muscle right here. It actually goes behind this muscle like that. So that's that muscle. And the sartorius goes behind that from the front view, but it comes all the way down here and it connects like this on the inside of the leg here, like that. So it creates this S curve right here like that. And then boom, like this, right? And I just kind of, I kind of think about it like that. But another S curve you can kind of think about just going to get rid of that for a second. Is this overall this curve right here? It kind of comes down right here, and then it goes like this, and then comes in, right? So you want that muscle to come out like that. This muscle starts from up here, and then kind of comes in like that. So you have this angle right here, right? So you want to think about this like that. So that's kind of a thing. I, I think about that curve right there. So that's a curve to think about. By the way, that muscle is called the vastus medialis. The one right here. Boom. It's the vastus medialis. Then you have here. And then you have the vastus lateralis that's on this side, like that. All right. So that's one thing you want to pay attention to is you want to pay attention to how the leg looks and like where your knees are and everything. The knees aren't just huge boxes that cover the entire leg, right? You have muscles on each side of the leg from the front view. So you have this tendon here that comes down, this collection of tendons. This is from the sartorius, which starts more up here. See, as it coming into early, it starts more up here and then comes across like that, like here and comes across like that. And then this right here would be those muscles in here. So um, in these tendons, you have the sartorius, but you also have the um, gracilis, which kind of connects more toward the center of the back of the inside of the crotch here, and it comes down to this bundle. And that creates this kind of fat pad right here. Most everyone has this kind of fat pad here. Even if they're like super defined, you're still going to see those tendons. And then inside, and then on this side here, you have a little bit of um, muscles as well. And so think about this coming down to like right about here like this. Boom, like that. He does have the widest part proper. The widest part of the leg is here at the crotch line. Hopefully this isn't too bright of a red. Maybe I should dull it down a little bit. All right, so, and then you have a little bit of a muscle and in, in like tendon like this. Now the calf kind of starts high here and then starts coming down like this, boom. And this one, because this comes in lower like that, this calf comes like this and then comes down. That's what gives us that angle. And that's how I remember, that's how I think about it. I think about this S curve here. That same S curve, he didn't, it's almost like he's drawing two different characters here. I don't know why this is at such an angle. Maybe he had the paper t tilted or something, but this should be, right here is where the crotches, that should be the widest part. 
but he should come out more, right, to match the other character, right? So it should be more of an hourglass like that, because he's trying to match the same character coming across, and then come down like that. That same curve that we just learned is present from the back and front side. It doesn't matter that you look at the back side. That same curve should be there like that, right? That same S curve. And then still on this side, you have the leg starting high and low. So it doesn't matter that you're, you're viewing it from the back or the front. That angle is going to be the same regardless. Now, you don't have to make the leg, you know, this thick. You can also, you can make it much thinner. Just come here like this. But just make sure you have it out and then in like that and then come thicker here and in. So you have that angle, right? So I just wanted to show some of these rhythms because they're really important to get right. Okay, now, once we have this here, it's kind of, I'm gonna use this uh, sketch pencil now. I actually might not be able to see this so well. We have this right here, boom. Why is that so big? Let's turn my pencil size down a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn this way down like this, and then I'm gonna just draw on top of it with a regular pencil. Because so I showed the main thing I wanted to show there. So let's come here like this, all the way to about here. And then we're gonna start here like this and kind of like that boom i don't know why this is oh i'm drawing with the wrong pencil okay no wonder it felt so weird i'm like that doesn't feel right at all boom like this and then here right you have this bundle of tendons that come here and then the muscle comes down i like hear more and then comes in like that so make sure to get that shape in there the kneecap is actually inside of here, right? So you want to make sure that your knee fits in here like this. It goes more to this side than it does this side. There's this space here for sure. And then it kind of has this thinner spot where it comes down to the bone like that. And you just want to make sure to keep that in there. And then you have this other rhythm line right here that kind of comes like this. Right? And that's, the, that's like the the bone where the muscle wraps over and you have the bone so you have like this flat edge right here where this is all like flat at an angle and you have the muscle kind of sticking out like that anyways just pay attention to that um, that part's really important to get right otherwise your figures are going to look very odd this is way too high right for breasts like don't don't do this like i know a lot of anime does this but honestly your anime is going to look sexier and better if you don't do this all right, don't get into the habit of trying to draw what isn't correct. So bring your breasts down much further. The breasts sit on the rib cage. So if even if your rib cage is way down like this, the breasts are going to sit on the on the rib cage and they're going to be more like this. Right? You want to have that armpit little area. This is the little armpit skin. Your boobs are like right where that armpit skin should be. Way too high. Bring them down like this. And then nipples, right? That's going to look much better if you do it like that. Make your neck thinner, especially if you're doing anime. Anime have very thin necks come come in like this, boom, right? So make your neck, definitely make your neck thinner. I would drop the arms down at an angle more like this, the shoulders, like that. Cut them at the angle and like this. That's going to look better. Than to come straight out like like she's got box shoulders. There's this angle. Always remember, there's this kind of angle right here, especially on female uh, deltoids. Okay, so those are some of the main things. Um, like those rhythms are important, even when you're just like doing the mannequin part. Now the side view also needs a lot of work. So let's go back to using red again, and using the ink brush here. So a lot of this is fine. Now it, the angle is really weird here. Um, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna take her and move her. Maybe you were drawing with your paper at an angle. So we're just gonna take it like that and kind of move her to where she's more straight up and down like that. Right, so the first thing is when you're drawing the head from the side view is you wanna start with a circle 
like this. So start with the circle. I'm on I'm on his layer. Kind of cut it in half like this. Like that. And then we're going to come down with the face. We're going to have the ear more toward the back, especially with anime. You have the ear more toward the back, which is kind of how you have it, and that's fine. And then we're going to come, imagine an angle like this, right? And then we're going to come here. We're going to come forward like this. Boom. All right, so that's more how we're going to be. And then we're going to come in and dip a little bit and then come out here for the nose. Boom, like that. And then just come in for the mouth here and then the little lips there and the little chin like that. And we're going to have the big eyes. Right, and then you'll have your hairline here, however you want to have your hair. The hair's going to be big because, you know, animes typically have big hair. Have the little piece of skin coming like this. This muscle comes down to the collarbone, which you kind of have, and then come at an angle. The whole entire neck is going to be at an angle. It's going to be thinner. You have it way too thick, more thin like that. And you have the collarbone from the side view starts here. Remember, it goes all the way to the arm like that. And then it kind of comes forward. And you have that right. And we're coming down. Now, see here, you had the breast way high. But over here, you kind of had it more right. Like, notice if I come straight across like this, it's meeting up more at the bottom of this breast. This one you had way too high. So you have the, more of the right idea over here. I'm going to kind of just change the shape a little bit like that. And that's the muscle. You have that right. The pec muscle comes up, and it connects into the arm here. And then you have the deltoid, which will kind of come off the collarbone. And it kind of comes like here from the side view like that. I'm going to make the arm much thinner. Like this. And remember that you have this, this muscle kind of connects up here, remember? So it kind of comes like this. So let's make sure we get that right like that. All right, so this kind of comes and connects like this. And this kind of comes out. And I'm kind of exaggerating that, but I just want to show, because you have... The bicep here, then you have the tricep back there, and then you have the brachialis in between. You have this muscle comes off right there. Remember, we learned about this, and it kind of comes like this. And then another one with it. So it's important that we get that right. That's what creates that shape. So you want to kind of have this line overlapping. Even if it's a simple cartoon, just understanding that anatomy can make a huge difference in how your figures look. And then you want to come out with the thumb part here. Remember that's kind of a triangle shape here like this? Like that. Remember her hand should only be like this big right here. Up to like her hairline down to her chin. Right about there. And this would be the knuckles. So you have it pretty much right there. Alright, so see if you have See how your arms look so weird, almost like they're wearing a shirt or something? And if you kind of tuck, make the arms a little bit thinner, bring them in, it starts looking a lot better, right? All right, so other things you definitely want to pay attention to from the side view is the rhythm of the leg, right? This is this is all wrong. I mean, look at this. This is very bad. And I'm not being mean. I'm just, that's not good, right? This rhythm here, none of this is good. None of that is how a human leg looks. Not in anime, not, not in any way. That's just don't make a leg look like that. So really pay attention to how like legs look. So there's a couple of rhythms I like to think about when I'm in the side view here. So one is this, you got it here. That's where you have this kind of bump coming out here where you have that hip. And then I want to come quite out as thick as this, but come down like this, right? If you want to make her muscular. But I would just, for now, I would just stick to something that's just kind of like this here, boom, like that. Right? You have this nice shape here for your mannequin. Make sure the butt comes out a little bit here. I'm going to really exaggerate this and kind of come in more at an angle like this. And I want to kind of really pull that angle and show this like that. So you want to make it a little bit smaller because you're doing anime. You have this right, this angle kind of comes out like that, and then you have the rib cage come in, but then you have the muscles that kind of come down like that and you want to come in and it goes to the crotch line. remember the crotch line is a little bit above which is right about there so that's pretty correct and then we're going to come with the 
leg here and we're gonna come straight to like this boom like that right kind of imagine it kind of coming to a shape like this now one of the rhythms that i like to think about um is think about this coming in like this like an s curve like this and coming in like this boom like almost like that right there because what happens you remember that bundle we talked about here this bundle right here that comes all the way down like this that bundle of um kind of looks like muscle tendons fat that bundle right here is, is visible from the outside because that because remember this is the outside or excuse me um that's the inside of the leg but on the outside of the leg we have a, a similar kind of um bundle of tendons that happen and it kind of creates a little bit of a shape like that right there sometimes you can kind of see the shape right there like that so that's kind of what i'm thinking about right and you kind of and then you have a little piece of skin right here before we get into the calf muscle and remember that same kind of s curve right here from the side view there's a similar s curve you can kind of think about this curve coming here and that creates that but then you can have another s curve comes across like this boom right and that kind of creates that shape where you can kind of come in i would actually i'd come a little bit higher from the side view we want to start that curve a little bit higher so it's more like comes across like this and then boom has that curve and you want to come out with it a little bit and then come in all the way down to the ankle right so that's kind of the curve i imagine and then this little bundle like that so if you imagine that curve and draw it then you can erase it and i'm going to kind of erase some of that as well but you see that curve it kind of runs all the way through the figure and that gives you this nice um pathway for the calf muscle here i'm going to kind of come a little bit more skinny like anime i'm not going to exaggerate it too much then the knee actually fits right in here. So when you have this curve coming in right here, the reason I did that is to show you how the knee is. So the knee kind of fits right into that little area. So you can imagine the knee kind of comes like this, which you kind of have, and it kind of comes at an angle like that, boom. But if you have it like this, see how much different all that looks when everything's right? Right, when everything's right, the knee actually looks, like you have the knee pretty much right, but you have all, everything around the knee is wrong. And so this all looks broken and wrong. This looks like a weird alien leg almost. And so if you do it like that, um, do the leg right, then all of a sudden your knee now looks good, right? And there's sometimes you can see, um, if you get more detailed, you kind of see this little like fat builds up right here. And it kind of has that indent right there. You can kind of see something like that. And I sometimes just draw the little, little line like this when I'm doing like anime or cartoons or comic books. I'll like have a little bit of the knee right there. I'll kind of show that line right there. And I'll kind of just break it up like that with a couple little lines, but not like solid lines. And then right here, there's another angle that kind of comes out right here. Cause this, remember that muscle we learned. And, and for those that haven't uh, watched my course, so just watch it to understand all the muscles we're talking about. And what's really cool, I'm going to show you guys something that, that the course comes with. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you a really cool Photoshop file that the Anatomy 2.0, the Anatomy 2.0 course comes with. And it's really, really useful. And I'm going to show you guys that because it's really cool. Anyway, just have this come out just a little bit like that, that muscle. Boom, like this. Just a little bit like that. Boom, coming down to the foot. Right now, remember, the foot is going to come back like this. It's going to come, it doesn't start from way up there. It starts more like right here. And it's going to come like this, boom, like that. And then you're going to come across like this. It has this kind of angle from up there. And then it comes like this. And then you're going to kind of show maybe where the toes are. And then that would be like where the big toe is. And I just kind of draw it like that. That's kind of a big foot now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'd probably, probably draw a little bit smaller than that. Let's do that again. I was like too focused on how, how close I was to the drawing. So I just kind of do like a shape like that in my mannequin. You can, you know, get more accurate when you start learning more of the anatomy and stuff. So look how much better that looks. And I didn't really do a whole lot. Look, I didn't do a whole lot different. Like if you look side to side, I pretty much stuck to I pretty much stuck to everything you have there. I didn't reinvent the wheel. I didn't try to go in and correct everything you did. You know, I'm just drawing right on top. I'm just drawing it more correctly. And by drawing it more correctly, you can see like, wow, that makes a huge difference. And it has that still has a kind of anime style, right? And if you want to have the thick, thick legs like that, you can, or you can make those legs much thinner, um, you know, and it would fit more of like an anime cartoon style. So, all right. Um, one of the things I want to talk about really quickly is 
Actually, I'm going to show you that file really quickly here. Because like I said, it's really, really useful. So I'm going to fire up Photoshop and show this to you. All right, so here is the Photoshop file that comes with the Anatomy 2.0 course. And right now that the course uh, is on sale for like $13. Udemy is doing a sale right now. And I often do sales as well. And so I think this file itself is worth that $13. Like even if you don't watch any of the course, um, just this file is so useful. So it, as you can see, it has um, the skeleton from different views. So you can see the character from different views and each muscle is on that layer. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Like look here at the lower leg. So it's all labeled here, what part of the body and you can expand these folders and uh, close them and open them. And when you open and close these folders, it shows you like, watch this. This is, this is for this, this leg right here. Cause it's just the inside leg I just wanted to show, but look at the sartorius muscle. Bam, you see that? You can see where it disappears right here. Remember, this is the muscle I was talking about, the sartorius, how it comes across and it comes behind the vastus medialis. So look at that. Bam, you can see it right there. You can also see a little bit of it right here in that view. The rectus femoris. This is that big muscle that's in the center there. Here's the vastus lateralis that we talked about. See, it's right there. The vastus medialis. Boom. And you can see from these different views what happens to it. See it on the outside there? You can see it right here. And you can also disappear this right here. This is the uh, right here, boom. Disappear that. Now you can actually see the vastus lateralis like that. Boom. See how you can see over here on this view how, how it, so you can, you can see from all these different views how that muscle looks. It really helps in learning anatomy. Boom, see? And if we go to the lower leg here, here's the muscle that we were learning for a second right here, the tibialis anterior. You see right there? So you can kind of see it from this view and this view from the side view. You see how it looks? Right there. So that's how we're showing how, that's what I remember I was showing how it kind of comes out a little bit because that muscle, right? And then from this view here, so this is like all the bone right here. So that angle of the bone and then see that muscle right there, that muscle creates. So that's what creates this line right here. So this kind of S curve kind of flows into here. And then I kind of imagine that the curve right here of this muscle and that line of the bone right there, boom, like that. And that's why I drew that line earlier where I was showing you where it curves in from the inside of the knee like that. That's the muscle right there I was talking about, the tibialis anterior. Anyway, so you can do this for all the different muscles. You have, um, this is your back calf muscles, and you can see it from all the different angles, what happens. So you can see over here from the front view, you can see that muscle from the, from the front view when, it, when it's developed. But then you have the muscle behind that, which is also important from the front view. And then you have the butt muscle. You can see from the different views how that looks. So you can do this for all the different muscles, all the muscles in the forearm, all of it's there. So if you come up here, we can collapse that. We can go to the forearms, open that folder. And then you have all these CR here. Boom, it shows you that muscle. And it shows you from all different angles. Like, see how the arms are raised? So you can kind of get an idea. And also have the arms turned or curved at different angles. So you can get an idea like where that muscle looks like. And can you see that muscle from those angles? This really helps for when you're trying to memorize how the muscles look. So that when you're trying to draw from imagination or you're trying to draw a certain angle and you want to make sure those muscles are visible, you know how those muscles should look. Because you know where they start from, where they end, and, where, and what's visible from that angle. So anyway, super helpful file. Like I said, I think this Photoshop file is worth the price of the course in itself when you buy it on sale. All right, let's get back to it. It also comes with a bunch of different like JPEG files and stuff you can use as reference that come in handy. Like here we have the side view. This is when we learn how to draw this. We learn how to draw this, this, this. We learn how to draw all of this in the course and why and the measurements and how to memorize how to draw this so you can draw this from your imagination. And it might seem difficult at first to draw this from imagination, and this is really easy. Like, it doesn't take too long to dedicate this to your memory. After a while, it starts from like second nature. And then adding these little extra details here doesn't take a whole lot long to learn either. So it's just really good when you, you know, you start learning all these different things and uh, put it, dedicating it to your memory. We have files like this here. We learn how to draw all this in the course, what it all means how to make your own measurements, all that kind of stuff, what the measurements mean, all that. 
All right, so let's finish this out by thinking about the backside here. So I'm going to just kind of erase some of this. Now, like I said, he has the whole thing at this like angle. That's kind of strange. So let's go ahead and actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll leave it at an angle, whatever. It's fine. We'll just draw it at an angle. All right. So you want to think about that halfway line right here. This is the crotch line. So he's, he has the buttocks, right? The buttocks come down below this line right here. They kind of curve in right here, boom, like that. They kind of have a, kind of make an upside down Y. Like that. It's kind of similar to if you're drawing, you know, a doggy mouth. And then you'd have the doggy nose right here. And you have the whiskers, right? And then you have the hourglass. So think about this coming all the way up here to the neck. So I like to think about those neck muscles here coming across, and this is kind of creating the rib cage here, like this. Think about that shape, and then think about the back of the rib cage like this. All right, so think about that shape, and then coming into this shape and coming out of that shape, you have this kind of bell shape down here like this. Let me kind of make this clear. Right, kind of have this bell shape right in here. Boom, like that. So what you end up with is you end up with this kind of kind of oval shape right here. Right? And then you kind of cut into that oval shape. And you have this kind of bell shape like this. That gives us that kind of hourglass shape like that. And that's where the crotch line is. That's where the widest part of the legs are. And then all of the legs are going to come in at an angle like this. Now, remember, everything from the back is going to be pretty much the same as the front when it comes to these rhythm lines that we've learned. So let's go ahead and let's pull that rhythm line and think about that, that calf muscle right here. We're going, to, we're going to keep it thin like he has it, but we're going to make it more accurate right here. Boom, like this, right? So let's keep that accurate. Come down here to the... Achilles tendon on each side. I'm going to kind of make sure we can really visualize this and see this clearly. Remember, there's this angle here, so we need to start from up here where the leg kind of starts to come out and then in like that. So we want to make sure we capture that. Then we'll have the ankle here and there on each side. And then we'll see a little bit of the foot right here like that, which he has. I like to imagine this kind of coming up into the leg like that. I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. Oh, even thinner. I have the calf muscle on this side, so I can come up. And he has that shape. But we want to come here and then come in like that. We want to make sure we have that proper shape going on there. Boom, like that. So another rhythm you want to think about from the backside is you have this kind of muscle right here that kind of comes straight, and then you start coming up like this to the leg, like that. And on the remember on the inside, remember that we've learned there's that bundle of tendons right here. So we can draw that bundle of tendons right there, boom, like that. There's a fat tissue that comes out right here on the thigh, all right? So the inside of the thigh has this kind of shape like that where you have this boom, boom right here. So he has most of that. So he's learning the anatomy. He's just not applying it. Well, and I think, I don't know, if maybe he got a little bit lazy. I'll show you another drawing he did because it's, it's, I think he did better with the, this was one of his latter ones he showed me, but I think with his first ones, he actually was doing better. Remember that angle. And the angle here is opposite. So kind of imagine like an hourglass. So if the angle is here like this, it's opposite for the ankles, right? This this ankle is higher. This bone is lower like that. Right, like I said, this whole thing is kind of leaning to the side. I don't, like, I don't know if he was like turning his paper sideways when he was drawing, but that's fine. We can draw it at this angle. Let's go ahead and kind of bring this up here. I'm gonna make the neck much thinner like this, because especially if we're going to do this kind of anime style, we want to make sure all this is thinner. 
And then we're going to come off of that for how we need to have our shoulder. So it's going to come off to the angle like this. Remember, it cuts at an angle like that and then cuts in like this. And then comes straight. And that's where you're going to have your arm shaped like that. Boom. And then you have the elbow in here. So I kind of usually draw like a little circle like that. And then the rhythm comes out like this and then comes down. You want to bring your arm out to the side more like this. And it comes right there. That's about where the wrist should be. And then the hands would start here. That would be like the thumb. And then you have hand. I'm just going to do like a basic shape for now like this. Right. So if you do that, you're going to see that it's going to start looking a lot better. Just you got to just kind of pay attention to the overall shapes you're doing and why why you're doing them. I think you have a good idea. You have a good understanding so far of what some of the shapes are. I can tell that you're you're figuring out what some of those shapes ought to be. And so just um, refine them more and really think about these rhythms. Think about these angles that need to be there. You know, think about how this calf needs to come out here how this rhythm should look, right? You have this kind of shape like this. And at the, the main shape is like this. Learn this shape first. You know, it's almost like, you know, like a like a, like two hills or like the, uh, if you draw it this way, it's like this top side of the lip, right? It looks kind of like a lip. And so think about it like that first. So boom, one angle comes like that and the other angle comes off. And then you can start adding in this little piece of fat that that could, it's often visible like that. And then boom, comes like this. And then from the, from imagine there's like this slight angle like this to the leg and that's how you can come up with this part right this part of the leg that comes like that boom right kind of just visualize that shape and it kind of comes like this right you have this kind of oval shape like this and you have this kind of oval shape like that if you imagine those two ovals right imagine one oval that's kind of at an angle like this that's one oval and it has this angle to it and it kind of comes like this and then imagine you have your other oval which is like that right and then you can pull these together and kind of pull in like that. And then you have where you have your knee in here. Then you have a little bit of muscle coming out and then coming down like this. And then it just comes right into the ankle. And so just that S curve that flows right here through that leg is something I really pay attention to. It's really good to pay attention to these kind of curves. It really does help when you're drawing. But all right, so cool. Hopefully that helps anybody else that might be struggling with certain things. And and notice I like I kept all of his style here. I didn't ruin the style. But, you know, it's all the same measurements and everything, but I just change it so that it, it's proper, so that it has the proper anatomy. And just by doing that, just to, just to make sure the shapes work, right? Because the shapes are, rep when, you're, when you're drawing in contour drawings like this, the shapes are representing the anatomy that's underneath, right? And so if you know that anatomy, you'll automatically know how these shapes should be. If you're trying to learn how to draw from memory and memorize how to draw, and you're trying to memorize shapes, well, those shapes change all the time, right? Depending on the angle that you're viewing it at. And so that's just the wrong way to try to go about it because you're, you know how many shapes you're going to have to memorize? You have to memorize so many different kinds of shapes. It's insane. And it's never going to happen. And that's why I, was, I always thought like, I'm never going to learn to draw from my mind, right? Because I thought that's how they did it. I thought that before I learned anatomy and stuff, I thought these people I was watching draw from their mind, I thought they just drew so many times, they just memorized all these shapes from different angles. But no, that's not the case. The case is that if you learn the anatomy, you know where the muscles attach to. You understand the three-dimensional form. You can sculpt the human figure from your mind, right? I can sculpt the figure from my imagination because I have an understanding of where all everything is attaching to, what all the muscles look like, what the muscles are attaching to. And that's not nearly as difficult to to memorize as trying to memorize a bunch of like just two-dimensional shapes from different angles. So if you imagine the leg from different angles, if you know where those muscles are, it's not too hard to think about what shape those muscles will create. So that's kind of how, how it works. Anyway, definitely check out Anatomy 2.0. You'll learn a lot. Um, it's a nice course. I've distilled it down. The old course, which I did like over 10 years ago now, I think, uh, the anatomy course. That anatomy course is still good, but it's really long. It's like 64 hours long, 68, something like that. It was all done in real time. Whereas I distilled all the information down in the new course to where Instead of trying to draw everything in real time, I drew it all and then kind of like slowed down when I needed to and like sped up to the stuff that's not really that important. But all the same information is there. I talk through all this information. Nothing is left out. So I distilled all that knowledge of 64 hours down into a much better, you know, about 15 hour package. But also I teach new techniques, better drawings. Uh, like, you know, I've grown a lot since I did that first course myself. So just like in drawing ability and stuff like that. Also, 
not being, not feeling like I had to draw in real time, I was able to take my time and really draw everything nice and then go back through it and, and voice over and tell everything, you know, teach all the knowledge about what, what you're doing, why we're doing it. So definitely check it out. Uh, I think some of the courses are free to preview or not some of the courses, but some of the lessons. And I'd recommend checking that out. All right. Thanks guys for watching. Hey, if you've watched this long, I'd like your opinion on something. Would you rather me come out with a course on how to uh, paint and use Photoshop, like the latest Photoshop? Because I haven't done a Photoshop course in a long time. Or, like, well, like, I think more than 14 years or something. <laughs> or should I do one on Krita 5? Now, I'm, I'll probably end up doing both maybe eventually. But which one would you like to see more? Would you like to, like, let's say, which one would you like to see first? Or if I never get around to doing the other one, which one would you like to see more? A course on how to draw and paint in Krita 5, and just a basic overview how to use Krita 5 for, for painting and drawing, or Photoshop. And if I do Photoshop, it's going to be specifically for how to draw and paint, um, not for photo manipulation and photo bashing and things like that. Um, I might show some brief things on that um, and photo manipulation and photo correction. That's a whole different thing. I don't know if you guys would even want a course on that, but if you would, let me know. So put your vote below, please. Um, vote by leaving a comment, just saying what you would want to learn next. If it's none of those things, then just vote for, just tell me what you want me to do next. One of the courses I do plan on doing after I finish the 3D anatomy course, how to digitally sculpt the uh, human figure so that it... Um, relates to drawing the figure, like understanding how to sculpt it and mess around with 3D. You don't have to be good at it, just understanding and getting an idea of it helps translate to drawing so much. Like it's so important. Like I understand now why my teacher had us try to mess around with sculpting when I was in art school, because it's so, so important to understanding how to draw and paint. Anyway, so if there's just something else altogether you'd like to see, let me know. Another course I do plan on doing is a course on how uh, to design and draw clothes from your imagination. I like to, everything I teach. I like to, I like to teach it so that you can learn how to do it from your imagination because that's so enjoy and joyful, and uh, it's it. I get so much enjoyment out of that versus having to draw from what I'm looking at, right? And you, in order to design stuff, you have to be able to invent stuff. You have to be able to make stuff up. You need a good foundation to do that. And so understanding like how clothes are put together will help you then start designing and come up with your own clothes ideas. Um, and you can you can also base it on other kind of you can like look at some references to get an idea of kind of how things look. Um, but you can then expand upon that. And you know anyway, we're gonna go through like folds and how folds work, and so you can like invent your own folds and stuff for comic books and all that. Anyway, that's the course that you plan on doing. But what course would you like to see most between Krita 5 and Photoshop? And, and again, it'll be how to use Photoshop and how to paint and draw with Photoshop, right? So it's only going to be talking about those things that relate to that, not that relate to like, you know, photo manipulation or photo correction and stuff. All right, cool. Thanks, guys, for watching. Much, much love, much love.